we continue to read, study, and discuss the case between Vincent Guthrie and Doretta Guthrie, who have divorced um, after 34 years of marriage. The claimant that Mr. Guthrie says he is a person who has always, had always been interested in making in investments in real estate and he had purchased property in Shoeberry housing scheme in Westmoreland with his own resources. He averts that after the purchase of Shoeberry, the family resided in a home there. Sometime afterward, he said he took up a job in Mount Airy, Westmoreland, and the family moved into the school cottage provided there, where his wife continues to reside. He further states that he brought three other lots of land, the first being property at Sheffield in around 1989. Subsequently, he says he purchased the Pitt Curley property for the purpose of building a home for my family to reside in. Later still, he saw a property at Hopewell, which too could be used to build a home for my family. He decided to purchase this property as well. To give me more options when I raised enough funds to start the design and eventually commence construction on a home. He says that in 2005 he had accumulated enough funds and so he started construction of a house at Pickelini completely on my own. He says that he has met the construction cost and continued to work on the property after the parties separated in 2006, although he acknowledges that between September and December 2008, his wife had done some mason work on the property. So, here, this is the Pitt Culinary property. Let's look back. Pit culinary property. Where is it now? Uh, okay, it is a sixty forty. The property that he is claiming sixty forty on. That he is entitled to sixty percent and Mrs. Guthrie is entitled to forty percent on that property. In the penultimate paragraph of his first affidavit, the claimant states that over the years of our marriage, I have supported the household and educated our children who are now young professionals. He acknowledged that properties were purchased in the joint names of the parties, although the claimant, Mrs. Mr. Guthrie, Claims that they were purchased from my sole resources without any assistance from the defendant, his wife, Mrs. his estranged wife at the time, Mrs. Guthrie. Save and accept the property at non parallel in which the title was taken in the sole name of Mrs. Guthrie, the defendant, although I helped to fund same. The claimant, Mr. Guthrie, further stated that even though the defendant, Mrs. Guthrie, contributed nothing to the property's acquisition, save and except non parallel, as stated aforesaid, I placed her name on the titles just in case anything happened to me. The defendant, Mrs. Guthrie, on the other hand, claims that any property acquired by them 
was acquired from their joint pooled resources and for no other reason than the joint benefit of the parties and the family. Indeed, she asserts that although the property at non par Eel was in fact purchased solely by her through a facility under the land settlement program, it was always intended, as in the case of all other acquisitions, for the benefit of the union and the family in general, notwithstanding the fact that the benefit was specifically attached to my employment, which facilitated the provision of the parcel under the land settlement program as an incentive to encourage teachers who were employed in that particular geographical location. So you see here the husband is saying that some of these properties he alone funded them. The wife is saying no. All the properties were funded by both of them. So there, there is that disagreement here. It was submitted on behalf of the claimant and indeed the fixed date claim form so stated so states that the claim is made pursuant to section four of the property rights of spouses section fourteen of the property rights of spouses act. In that regard the claimant Mr. Guthrie submits that none of the properties in issue fall within the definition of a family home in the Act. It is common ground. So the Act states what a family home is, and Mr. Guthrie is saying that none of these properties fall within the definition of a family home. Because, you know, once it's a family home, the 50-50 rule would apply. It is common ground that the parties have habitually resided in properties provided by the employer of one or the other of them. Although, as I shall state later, the question of the family home does not arise in any event. It may be noted that there is no issue between the parties involving family home. So, the family had lived in the school cottage. And it was only recently that Mr. Guthrie started constructing a house from his own funds. So, here it says there is no issue of family home. That's the submission by Mr. Guthrie's um, lawyer. Section 14 of the Property Rights of Spouses Act, referred to as the Act, provides as follows. Section 14, part, um, part 1. Where under section 13, a spouse applies to the court for a division of property, the court may a make an order for the division of the family home in accordance with section 6 or 7, as the case may require, or b subject section 17, subsection 2, subject to section 17, subsection 2, divide such property other than the family home as it thinks fit, taking into account the factors specified in subsection 2 or where the circumstances so warrant, take action under both paragraph A and B. Mr. Guthrie's evidence is that he alone was responsible for the purchases or the various properties of the various properties acquired in the joint names of the parties without any contribution from the defendant. So he's saying he bought the properties and Miss Sis Guthrie did not contribute towards them. Mr. Guthrie, meanwhile, consistently maintains that she, Miss, oh, 
defendant, Mrs. Guthrie, meanwhile, consistently maintains that she was always working as a teacher slash educator and that the resources of both were pulled together in order to facilitate the acquisition of property for the benefit of the family. In that regard, therefore, she does not resist Mr. Guthrie's claim to half interest in any property which is jointly held, but does challenge his claim for a 100% interest in the property at Hopewell or his claim for a 60% interest in the Pit Kelly, Volume 134, Folio 933. Right. The affidavit filed by both parties contain numerous allegations and denials in respect to denial of the arrangements which existed between the parties. It is not necessary for me to detail each and every such affidavit and to say in each case which is preferred. So the judge is not going to go into the details of all the accusations and the allegations and the denials. It would be quite interesting to see them, but the judge is not going to go into those details. It is noted, however, that the court had the benefit of observing the affidavits and the demeanor of each of them as well as the affidavit evidence. The court finds that the defendant, Mr. M Mrs. Guthrie, was a more credible witness and that her demeanor was more consistent with one telling the truth. So the court observed them in cross-examination and their speeches and saying that and the judge is saying that they believe what Mrs. Guthrie was saying more than what Mr. Guthrie was saying. It says the defendant, as Mrs. Guthrie, was a more credible witness and that her demeanor was more consistent with one telling the truth. All right, so here. Um, we continue reading. In that regard, <clears throat> the court was struck forcibly by the admission of Mr. Guthrie in cross-examination that he does not know anything about the school fees of his own Darwin who is pursuing Tertiary education at the Caribbean Maritime Institute. Nor has he contributed to the cost of medical treatment for his daughter, Shanique, a sufferer from a plastic anemia, as he has not been asked. I had paused and looked up the meaning of. Darwin, as it is here, but Darwin, I have not found it has a English and an English word with a meaning, but has a name. Okay, but anyway, we continue. So they said that Mr. Guthrie said that he did not know anything about the school fees. Of his daughter, nor has he contributed to the cost of treatment of her. So the court is considering that, using that against him, that he is not a credible witness, because they said the court was struck forcibly. Seems to mean mean that they were surprised at this admission. I will continue. This is in spite of his. Avertment referred to above 
that throughout the marriage he supported our household and educated our children who are now young professionals. The documentary evidence provided by the defendant concerning the illness of the child, Shanique, is also very telling. In light of this, the court is of the view that unless there is objective third-party evidence to lead to contrary view, that means unless there is somebody else, some witness other than Mr. or Mrs. Guthrie, the court is prepared to accept the evidence of Mrs. Guthrie whenever it conflicts with that of Mr. Guthrie. Thus, the court accepts the assertion by the defendant, Mrs. Guthrie, that the parties had always proceeded on the basis of a shared intention to acquire property for the benefit of the family. Alright, so from here, you can see, when you go to court, whether in a divorce case or otherwise, tell the truth and have your documents to prove what they're saying and as it talks about third party if you know of someone who can back up what you say bring them to the court just in case all right okay. i accept that in that regard they had pooled their resources and maintained joint bank accounts upon which they were both able to draw without need for reference by one to the other. Before considering the application of the law to the facts found in the evidence, it is useful to recall that the issues which were joint relate only to the land at Orchid Gardens and particularly. The claim in respect of the various bank accounts at NCB, NCB Capital Market and JMMB, and the claim for the defendant to refund the claim, the claimant's one half of, um, of the payment made by him in respect of the parties purportedly jointly acquired debts. Next time, we'll look at what the law says regarding this case.